having conversations with him, he was just like, I don't know how much I, longer I can, I can do, do this. And what was you all's response? I couldn't imagine. Um, just to hold on. I mean, we'd do anything to help you, Stephen. What, what do we need to do? We'd do anything. But the day it happened, it was just he didn't respond to any of us. We couldn't get him to respond to nobody. But he did tell us, he told his girlfriend that um, he wouldn't, he would not live another 50 years. I don't know what happened that day. I don't know. VA. He was supposed to make an appointment. He, he was, was supposed, supposed to, to be going. An appointment. He was fe- go ahead, going to pick up his medication. Yeah, he was left the house at 630 that morning to go to the VA because he had an appointment. I don't know what happened. But then all of a sudden we get a phone call that he's going to kill himself in the VA parking lot. So she calls me and I come down here and I called the VA and I told them, you know, my brother is there in the parking lot and that he has a gun and he's talking about killing himself. And all they said is he called us this morning, but he never showed. And I told them, I said, well, he is there. This is what's doing. And all they could tell me was, no, he's not there. They wouldn't do anything else. They wouldn't call nobody. They just said he's not here and that's it. So we drove to his house and he wasn't there. So then we called the police in Pike County. The officer came out and he said, well, I'm gonna get in touch with Dublin police to see if they can go look. So in the meantime, I called back down to the VA and tell them, you know, he's, he is in your parking lot. Could you please send somebody out there or somebody needs to find him? And all they said is he's not here. So then I get on his Google and pinpoint his location on his phone and it's in the VA parking lot. So instead of, we sat there for about an hour and never heard anything. So we started driving down there and about 15, 20 minutes before we got there, they finally called my mom and told her over the phone. And then we get down there and the officer says he's at the Fairview Hospital. So we get down there to get, you know, to find out where he's at. They didn't know where he's at. They said he was at the VA. And this is after they find his body. And then so I call over to, they're trying to find the VA. The VA says they don't have him They couldn't the even find they my son's body. So at, they couldn't find him. So I called down to the, to the it, VA again. That's just crazy. And they crazy. finally put the director on the phone at the VA. And the director, you know, he, he, he finally said that they have him. And this. So come to find out, the, the VA had him. Yes. <laughs> and I mean, I, I can't even imagine. It seems like you all try to do absolutely everything you can to prevent to, to stop prevent him. this from happening so you know once you did get that phone call mom i mean what was running through your mind <laughs> i just wish they'd have found him and stopped him locked him up did whatever they had to do because i need my son here i need him but I do know that he told his girlfriend that he was going to do it in the parking lot so they could find his body so that maybe somebody would pay attention to what's happening. So other vets don't have to go through this. So his story needs to be heard because, or he died in vain. 